Uh, good evening. Welcome to the Sunderland Board of Selectmen meeting. Today is Monday, March 19th, 2018. And we have only two items listed on the agenda, but I think it'll take a little while to talk about these two items. So, <clears throat> first we get our finance committee here. We're going to talk about the FY19 budget considerations and employee health insurance proposals for the evening. <clears throat> Any preference as to what we want to tackle first? Well, if I could, Mr. Chair, mm. it would probably make sense having a timeline with respect to notification of our current health care provider to talk about the town's current health care provider, its coverage, and the energy and the byproduct of the energy that Sherry put out looking for maybe an alternate. And uh, as you know, we've, we've got the Hampshire County Trust for, God, it was as long as, well, Franklin County Trust for a little over a decade prior, and then Hampshire County Trust through an assimilation where they were, they were, they were merged together. Um, and this year's increase was enough of a concern that the office went out looking for health care. And um, we have had both Maya as well as the Hampshire County Trust executive members downstairs uh, at the, in, in the selectman's office, meeting with the financial team, including members of the finance committee, members of the uh, select board, oh, I represented um, uh, the treasure collector, the accountant, and then uh, town administrator. We saw the two analyses that came forward from uh, both Maya as well as from uh, the Hampshire County Trust. And what we have here is, what we have here is a, a year at which the Hampshire County, let me give it the, the cliff notes, a year at which the Hampshire County Trust uh, is moving uh, to use a little bit more in the way of its reserves to keep the premium cost, the actual face value of the, of the face value of the actual coverage down. But if for the first time in a decade plus, is uh, shifting some of the costs, many of the costs, to the people who are enrolled in it. Yeah. And some of those costs are, are pretty, pretty, pretty big jumps. Mm -hmm. What used to be a zero contribution for a contributing member uh, is in, in the case of emergency room is $2,000. And anyway, there's, there's, a, there's a spreadsheet that goes along with this. But those were enough to warrant um, an area of concern here at the, at, at the town. So Sherry reached out uh, to Maya, came in. I have to say the first meeting with Maya, and I'll go a little long in the tooth if it's all right. Mm -hmm. The yeah. first meeting with Maya. Who is Maya? Sure, it's a Massachusetts uh, ino Inter Inocular Asso in Insurance Inter Association. Association. So it's a, it's a pool, it's a great question. It's, it's, a, non, it's, a, it's a nonprofit cooperative of municipalities and non-government agencies got together, made a big pool of insurance. So Maya, M-I-A-A, is the underwriter of our property loss, the town's property loss, also the town, and I'm not advocating for Maya, I'm just giving you the 101. Um, they're also our, our loss prevention people, they underwrite our workers' comp, uh, they do most of the town's of Sunderland's insurance, as well as many larger municipalities, and some, some non-municipal, non-government organizations, waste MWRA, those kinds of places. So they're basically uh, a, govern, a government and non-government, uh, non-profit insurance pool administered out of um, one office. And they do a whole bunch of things. So scale, it's a great, a great lead in. Scale is kind of important. When the Hampshire Trust picked up the Franklin Trust, there was a, there was a scale piece. It was like, oh, there's more of us now. We can, we can do a little bit more uh, with respect to health insurance. Um, so ho I hope that was helpful. The, the um, Hampshire Trust this year has moved some of those benefits toward uh, staff, I'm sorry, toward enrollment enrolled participants. I'm going to get this right eventually. I'm not an insurance guy. Sean, make sure I get it right. Um, and at the same time, it's ticking up a little bit of the percentage of, of our coverage for the first time in, in some time. It's gone up in years past. We've had a couple of double digits, 17s and 18s, when percent increases, when things were really rocking. They've been pretty steady in the last three or four years. 
but that's because they've also been using a fair amount of their reserves to keep those premiums down. So an area of concern across the discussion with both Maya and with the Hampshire Trust has been oh, how, how deep are your pockets, right? Can, can you go six months? You know, what, what are the risks of actually going belly up? Everybody's said, no, there's no risk of that. Don't worry about that. Mass exodus would have to do that. Big competition would have to do that. We don't see that on the horizon. One of the reasons we're raising premiums is to rebuild some of those uh, cushions. Makes perfect sense. With the Maya plan versus the Hampshire Trust plan, the Hampshire Trust offers a, a, a menu, and the menu is prefixed. Here are your benefits, here is your rate, here is your pool. They both use uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield. Maya's plan, we were at the very first meeting a little struck that they had kind of picked away at a plan that looked really good except that it wasn't apples for apples for coverage. And that was something that the financial team here at town was a little concerned about. So we asked Maya to go back and say, okay, here's our enrollment. We want the exact same level of benefits that we have today. We wanna to know exact, or what's being proposed, right? We wanna know what it is from you and what it is from you, left to right. And that's what we're here to talk about tonight. There is some opportunity for reduction on the town side and there's some opportunity for some reduction on the town side and maybe even increasing the percentage of the contribution the town pays for the employees. So that's, that's what's in front of us right now. There, I'm sorry that, that was long-winded, but with respect to the two plans, it's important to bear in mind their benefit for benefit right down the line, current enrollment, sticker price to sticker price. And the reason, one of the reasons, many reasons for bringing finance committee and continue working with the finance committee as we go through the process is that we're still in the, well, a little less than $300,000 difference between what we actually have and what we actually are being asked to spend. And that's a really important piece. That's also a driver for this discussion as well. Any kind of savings, in particular on healthcare, which is considered a strategic savings, is important. You're not making a one-year move. You're hopefully kind of, and you've heard, everyone's heard the term bending the curve. We're trying to manage costs, all of that stuff. We're hoping a move in this year equals a flatter trajectory going in the future. We heard that last week from the Maya rep who was here. There, I'm done. You know, the topic begs it. It's not, it's not a, you know. It's just, it's a unexciting but very important it's, detail it's oriented thing. Shabli mineral dry. <laughs> there you go. <clears throat> and it was very clear that she said that the maximum increase in the future would be 11% and so that would avoid right. possible 17, 15 right. percent increases year to year. That's a, that's a really good really good point as well. They talked about the pool norm and then the maximums outside of, based on your claims. So their pool norms, I think she said were 4.5 this year. And then, you know, we, we, don't, we don't have that with Hampshire Trust regardless. Even if we just move left to right, we don't have that. We have something very different. So the impact on the taxpayer for the operating budget is very different. You're talking, we're not talking small numbers here. You're talking tens of thousands of dollars year on year on year on year. And that was, it was very interesting to see the differences. Yes. Last week in the numbers. Right. <clears throat> so do we want to go through each of these or? Um... Well, I think maybe for a larger discussion, if I could, Mr. Chair, and I don't, mean, I don't want to be the one driving the bus exclusively. I think it's important that we have had an open discussion here and this, at the selectmen's level and the finance committee level and, and um, in those discussions uh, in particular with uh, Finance Committee member Francis, who's been advocating, you know, how, how can we help, you know, people who aren't in uh, contract pools, who aren't uh, part of a union, uh, right. if we can't keep up in the, with respect to the costs of uh, livings, what other kind of expenses can we help with? And this reduction, this proposal with Maya here, with, let me back up, the town currently contributes 55% of an employee's match 
for healthcare. We're the lowest in, in a lot of ways. Yeah. We're, we moved off of 50% half a dozen years ago, Tom? Six, seven no, years six, ago? Seven years ago. Um, yeah. And that lift wasn't easy. I think we have an opportunity here to save on the premium costs and add another 5% of the town's contribution. And I think that's an important part of our discussion. Right, because when you look at the differences, we can bump that up and still come out a little bit ahead. Correct. So it's kind of a, when you look at that, that's kind of a rare double bonus. This is a rare opportunity. Respect. And it's not unlike, and we have a couple of years in front of us, and I'm mm -hmm. gonna tie these together. This might be, you might have to kind of follow the trail of breadcrumbs. We're, we're in the process of retiring some pretty serious debt in the next 24 months. And that has a direct impact, a direct impact on the tax rate. So the question about long-term budgeting becomes a normalization of a tax rate or you know, gyrations. Borrow, rate goes up, borrow, you know, pay off, rate goes down. Removing some of that noise, this is one of those, I think, opportunities as well we have a relatively stable tax rate. We have a deficit we've got to deal with, and we're, we, I'm not off of my, I'm not off of my notion that we need to have an override for a structural operating deficit. But there is an opportunity here by using some savings to bend this healthcare curve. And again, it's boring as hell. But a decade from now, we may well appreciate this meeting or a future vote. So in, in the grand in the grand scheme, you know we have Maya. Do you guys have the Maya pieces in front of you? Yeah. And so even even with an increase in contribution, you can save four or five thousand bucks. And again, hang on just one second. If we were to do just the numbers themselves, if you were to look at the healthcare themselves, the town's mm -hmm. contribution, apples to apples, right now. Hampshire Trust, we, we are budgeted to raise uh, $228,000. Uh, we have an opportunity to have apples to apples, $205,000. If we took, that's at 55% match. If we went to uh, added 5% increase to the match from the town's perspective, this year 55% for Hampshire Trust, which is the town's match at 228,443. Even if we, added 5% with the Maya proposal, we would still be 224, 379. Right. Versus 249, versus 211. Versus 249. Now again, I'm, I'm, I'm not advocating for a particular position, but I am suggesting that if we could get out of this year and increase the contribution to the employees and either be equal or better, that's not a bad position to be in. No, right. Because even bumping that up, you know, if you look at the peer group, we're still, you know, we're still, less. We're still fairly low, right. but at least this right. gets us up a little bit right. more. And, and this ties into, if I could, mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, something mm -hmm. the, the, the personnel committee has talked about, and the personnel committee talked about, well, how do we, how do we gauge, how do we gauge employees? What's our comparison? And oftentimes you run up against the match with respect to healthcare. You know, we don't, we don't, nobody in Sunderland town government is, is here to become particularly wealthy. Yeah. However, in, in the case here, those 2 and 3% increases or 1% or flat or cuts we've had in the past, this could be helpful for a number of employees. Right. Anyway. Make, to make the difference. How much would that contribute to, or make a difference in a town employee's salary? It's a great question. Actually, it's not a salary, and that's an important, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's not even considered a benefit, really. It's not a compensation benefit, but it offsets some of their actual living costs. So if you look at the contribution an employee makes that goes up by whatever the, the premium cost is, this year the awareness really came up with the actual kinds of co-pays. The list, we have, a, we have had we still have a very good plan for the amount of 
contribution an employee makes for individual visits, for prescription drugs, for emergency care, for the total umbrella over the course of the year. As someone who's been, been involved in the healthcare system and is, is self-employed, uh, I have to say it is the death of a thousand cuts. I see a physical therapist twice a week, it cost me 30 bucks. That was 300 bucks ago, I'm still going. So these kinds of then, you know, preaching to the choir, right? Mm -hmm. So those those kinds of those kinds of things the town's taxpayer doesn't necessarily see, but the employee certainly does by a thirty dollar cut or a ten dollar cut or a five hundred dollar cut when a kid's got to go to the emergency room. Right. Those kinds of costs we can't anticipate by participation, but we also know if they're covered or they continue to be covered, that's an intangible benefit. That's hard. It's hard for the town to say, yeah, the employee saved. $3,100 last year. I don't know what that is because someone could be perfectly healthy and have a great year. Someone could hit the skids and be in, in it for 10 grand. That's hard. I, I, I struggle with that. So it's, well, well, it's not, it's, so if the town increases its contribution by 5%, mm -hmm. that doesn't translate does not change a 5% increase. No. In no, 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 it's a great, actually, that's, that's a real, that's a, that's a really good point, Bob. That's something we can get our head right around based on enrollment and what that, what that contribution of the town can actually be. What we're seeing here is that increase uh, is a whopping $9,394.42. If we went with Maya and we went to 60%, that's the right column, second to last number. So with a $9,362.9394 operating budget increase to the town, we can save that for people who are currently enrolled. Scott, well, yeah. can, can you address um, every year, um, and, and see, it, we get, there's an employee or two that um, we get notice from the state that. That's a great point. You want to, want to or, address or, that? Or actually, or actually from out of state. Or out of, right. Right. So uh, there is, and we can't because of the nature of this health insurance, the town, the town as part of the uh, Affordable Care Act <laughs> is notified. Uh, the treasurer collector actually gets this notice and has to defend it. And the town is notified every year about it's a town's health care plan being considered affordable. And there are, a, and I, I can only talk to it topically, Tom. I know. But there's, 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 a, there's a, a reporting function about the benefit that we provide to the staff. And the people in, who are in our employ who participate or are forced not to participate. And that's kind of like the dividing line. So since the Affordable Care Act, we've been notified on each of the years since its implementation that elements, elements of our, and if, I, if you're watching, make sure I get this right, elements of our health care are considered unaffordable. And the elements are either the copay component or our contribution. Now it's important to bear in mind our peers, our towns around us, and our agencies around us, they're not much farther north than we are. Over the course of the negotiations I participated in at a handful of levels, whether it's Franklin Tech, the school administrations, the tech school, the Frontier Regional, or here in town at the elementary school, one of the things you go for is you, you start pulling those contributions together so that you kind of helping a little with each other. So the town's position has been to get after some of those benefits that seem rich on the surface. After a couple of years of a couple of those negotiations, they're, they're not, they're, there's not a lot of gap anymore. So the town of Sunderland at 55% is still kind of a bottom outlier. And anyway, that's, that's another piece. To Tom's, to Tom's point, we're notified since the ACA has been in, in since the um, Affordable Care Act at the federal level has been implemented that we have a challenge by an employee or two or three any given year and it takes up time for the treasurer collector to actually rebut that challenge and file an appeal and put our health care pieces forward. And I find it fascinating that a government agency is being challenged about its affordability. And again, I'm a private employer. I have private health insurance. I pay for it for employees. 
I struggle with this notion that with these kinds of premiums that it can be challenged as being affordable. But it has been. There hasn't been a year. We have one right now. It, it ha uh, So, I mean, when you, you so you do have to look at the what we pay also. I mean, and the, I guess that's that's you know. And, and if, if we don't look at it internally, someone's looking at it right. from over the shoulder, from outside looking in at us also. So you know, Tom, if I if I could, we, you use use the term if I could, Mr. Chair. Mm, yes. uh, Tom, you use the term ability to pay, right? We we've been through eighteen budget cycles together. We, we started hearing ability to pay with regard to a state assessment after ed reform and the minimum contribution and ed reform and ability to pay. We, were in, we went through two budget hearings this year with the elementary school. We have increases in our education costs of a quarter of a million dollars. And we're still labeled without having the uh, ability to pay, 248 and change. Call it an even quarter of a million. If you added 60 bucks, right? We're talking now about the challenge of the ability to pay of $9,400. Yeah. And I think that's, that's an important thread to have out there. Can I, yeah. can I be clear that we've actually had uh, official yeah. appeals from town employees Correct. stating that, that parts of our for healthcare have been considered, unaffordable. considered unaffordable. Correct. You can confirm that with the treasurer collector. And that's uh, at least three years since the ACA has been in place. Oh, um, uh, uh, it took effect in, in 2012? I think it's more around there. Yeah. yeah. In that range. All right. So three. Yeah, you can, again, please double check with that. And so here, again, what we have in front of us with respect to healthcare. And it sounds like I'm advocating. I'm, I'm a pretty steady budget hawk. People who've worked with me for a long time know that. I do see this as an opportunity, though. You don't get many. No, like well, you, don't that, that's get many. Why, uh, you don't get many opportunities. No. When, when I looked at the numbers last week when we got them, I was like, right. hmm, that's interesting. Anyway. <clears throat> so I think uh, the cliff notes, it's important to bear in mind that there's a notification. There is one piece of timing that's a notification to our current plan holder. There's also in that change of plan. Uh, it does not affect retirees. Doesn't affect. Doesn't affect anybody. The same carrier. This is Blue Cross that's Blue Shield. Example. That's really important to bear in mind. The enrollment piece and the notice to exit of Hampshire County Trust essentially happen in real time. None of this happens until a vote of the board, recommendation, and then notice to Hampshire Trust. There's a legal, we have to, we have to get out of that in a very legal and regimented fashion. And again, this is only if it moves to fruition only through uh, into fiscal um, 19, so July 1st. It's, it's a component of the budget that is consistently dynamic. And again, as we have seen in the past, if there's opportunity to keep our tax rate relatively stable and work inside of the framework of our ability to pay, and I, I think that's important. If we're going to get it from one side of bureaucracy, we might as well take it from the other. Right. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Have we had any, any other discussion that you guys want to? Not on my part. Any comments at all? So then procedurally, we've got, uh, you guys will take a vote once you've got a quorum, right? right. And then we've got till the 30th to sign that Correct. and send that in. So, Correct. Yeah. so we'll have that as, as soon as possible. Great. Because then maybe we can then vote next week and then yeah. send it off on its way. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. So can I ask, with respect to the omnibus budget, as we see it in front of us, you know, we've got the two, you guys have up in the top corners, you've got the Maya 60 Cola 2. Can we talk about the Cola piece? There's still a bit of tension between what the personnel committee recommended, what some departments have asked for, 
and mm -hmm. what's actually currently in the budget. Um, this current budget reflects a COLA of 2%, top right highlighted. Yeah. It also removes some department requests, specifically the library. And if I'm not mistaken, and Tom, you can help me with this, it was a recommendation of the, uh, the David Personnel Committee was 3% to kind of even out some of those outliers in the requests. Mm -hmm. I, st I, I can't uh, speak to, and I, I, I simply cannot, because not only do I not know, I don't think it's appropriate, who's enrolled and who's not enrolled in the healthcare piece. Mm -hmm. But if, if we combined this increase with this increase, the town's percentage of increase to 60% by adding 5% this year, which nets zero or less to the operating budget, I, I don't know if I can go on board with a full 3% increase. And I get some people are not enrolled in the healthcare, but this is a legacy cost that will continue. Yep, and it's an unknown. You don't know because of that. Correct. What, you know, how many people would switch and how the cost, Correct. yeah. And that was something, that was definitely something we discussed because yep. it's, it's an unknown risk, really. Correct. Yep. I would say in the budget that I would, I would also say that a financial team meeting last Tuesday morning that uh, the treasure collector has an additional two family potential built into this expense budget. That's right, she usually puts that in there, yep. That's important to bear in mind that we're not going in flat this enrollment versus you know no growth on they understand we have turnover every year people don't see that we have turnover every year and in particular on the on this on this education side yeah. <laughs> as a as a treasurer in august and September. exactly yeah. <laughs> exactly yep the workman's comp and the environment <coughs> yeah that's all fixed not related to this that's based on past enrollment and uh, actuarial figures moving forward. <coughs> same, same kind of, and, and workers' comp is about number of staff. Do we see some spikes when you go up in a year because you hired somebody or you added positions? We haven't added any positions. Um, and our contact hours, that you know, it's total hours worked. So workers' comp looks at three things. In the private sector, they look at sales, they look at total payroll, and then what type of, what type of work you actually do in the private sector, I'm sorry, in the public sector, it's a little bit different. They don't look at sales, they look at total payroll costs. And then your, your, your SIC, SICs, your different codes, and your prior, your, your, your history. So history is part of workers' comp on the private sector as well. Much less volatile, interestingly enough, than sales. If you have a 100% jump in sales, you can bet your sweet bottom your workers' comp is going up the next year. <laughs> you, you didn't do anything, but they figure and you're making some more money, we got to get a cut. As someone who pays it every single year. Workman's comp, yeah, you know, it really depends every on Every single year. Depend on your industry as well. Correct. Mm -hmm. if, you're a, if you're a roofing contractor, yep. you don't want their workman's yeah. comp bill. Correct. <laughs> like, a little higher. They, they figure one out of three workers gets hurt or something like that. A third of my contact is sales, not in the field. Yeah. Anyway, this, that's a whole other discussion. The uh, and, SIC and codes. The other thing is unemployment, Bob. Unemployment right. is based on, and, and we have been, we have seen, we have seen changes in unemployment yep. in the past, and that all depends on, on like if the school is, when when we lay people off, we a bunch of people off. Right. If you lay people off at the schools, that affects that that does affect your your unemployment yep. rates down. Uh, down the road, I heard and it, it lasts for a long time. I heard it described a long time ago. A guy named Paul Harvey used to say, mm -hmm. gas prices mm -hmm. go up like a rocket and come down like a feather. It's very true. Same thing with insurance. Yep. You have one or two sick, one or two adjustments, they go up like a rocket, they come down like a feather. It's a good description. Yeah. Finance Committee, with <laughs> respect to the health piece, um, I think it was important, again, to emphasize it's, it's plan for plan. We're not making any changes. Right. And with right. the, no change in the underlying carrier, it's minimal Correct. disturbance to everybody involved, which is also a nice benefit. I, I used to... All of the town employees as well as the elementary school. 
Yes. They are town employees. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I used to, I used to uh, and I told a story last week, I used to work at a place in the, the early 90s, um, late 90s. We were changing health insurance every every year. I mean, we went through we went through PPOs and M yeah. HMOs and back to the PPOs and and I can tell you if you if you're if you're had a young family and you, so my concern is that has been is that our employees don't have to go through that. I mean, Scott Scott is. Um, there's something to be said for um, uh, loyalty or whatever to a certain company um, that that stood by you. In, in Hampshire, they have stood by us for, for a long time. Um, but at the same time, you have to look at what your employees are doing. And if they're, get, if they're paying more for less services. Straight out of the pocket. Mm -hmm. right, out of, and right out of the pocket. That, that's a major thing. I don't think there, I mean, there's, Anybody that has health care understand we don't we don't want to get in that cycle where everybody's changing every every year every two years. It's very disruptive. I, I think you start going to that yo yo you're not you're not making you're not making uh, you're not making a good decision. My my uh, is um, a large organization. It's a municipal organization. Um, it's been around since the they've been around since the early nineties. We still we still get better costs and plans and flexibility under them than the GIC. Right. GIC was a big savior. Big the GIC was a big savior for many cities and towns. Um, unfortunately, GIC has never been never been affordable for us. So we have looked at the GIC and the plans that they offered. So right right now, it does look like the. Uh, my in Hampshire coming up with the same exact plan, same, basically the the cards will change, but the but the doctors and prescriptions benefits us. That's a big that's a big thing to put into consideration. Well, I, mean, I think you kind of alluded to you know you have to make one emergency trip because you've got a sick kid or you or you're injured or something outside of regular doctor's office work hours that can put a significant dent in your wallet. Correct. So. Is the decision yeah. on that something that the union is going to have to say? Yep. Great question. Yep. Any any change in health care opens the negotiation for both our police department as well as for our teachers union. That's built into the contract. It's baked right in because it's, a, it's part of the negotiation. I think in the case of a... Um, a lateral, meaning my feeling is in the case of a lateral, same benefit, same carrier, a little less money, and we're going to potentially pick up 5% of an increase, um, there might not be a lot of hand wringing. That said, in years past, it's not been as much fun. One other question you mentioned that Maya. Uh, we have town connection for insurance, yep. mm -hmm. through other things. Yep. So in a sense, it's not, we're, there's not, we've had that for many Long years time. as well. You, you so know, one of, one of the, great, yeah, actually, great Ma, Maya does, Maya does I, as our insurance carrier, they, they, they do many things. Er, um, the town office building was broken into uh, five, ten years ago, whatever it was. Um, we applied for a grant for um, Maya, and they gave us a grant, and they paid for the security system. No one knows that. Most people don't know that, but Maya pays that. Um, we, have a, we have CDL drivers in the highway department. CDL drivers have to have drug tests. Well, Maya does our drug right. tests for us. Um, they, they also um, offer classes, uh, risk um, assessment. They do risk assessment. They go around the buildings, look at that. Many many insurance companies do that, but they also put on uh, classes. They always have drivers classes. If you're looking for drivers, or they're they're always putting on on classes. We we go to the Maya is one of the the groups that supports the conference in January. When we go to those things, we actually we actually take classes, um, right. and we can we earn. 
uh, discount points right. for the town by going to those those classes. So they're they're very proactive in education right. and um, trying to trying to uh, limit their our our exposure to uh, potential problems. Yeah, yeah. They do a loss prevention annual loss prevention audit of all the facilities. And we get credits and points, and you can apply those toward grants. It sounds a bit gimmicky, but it's a, I mean, try doing that at home, calling up your home insurance, and say, "Hey, mm -hmm. you know, I got bars in the windows. What do I get off of that?" Yeah, yeah. forget it. <laughs> so, anyway, we we've we have historically applied those. It's a great question. The relationship isn't, you know, sweetness and light. It's still an insurance company, but it's our but it's our insurance company. You know, it's it's the one it's the one that we participate in with a whole bunch of other communities, and they get it. They know where their bread is buttered. So, if we have a, if we don't have a if we're not a train wreck and a big liability, they're they're pretty good. I, I don't want to be like a train wreck. I'd rather be a little more programmatic about it. But great questions with respect to that. I know our next topic is FY19 budget considerations, although that's what we've been talking about. Well, we've been, we've been talking about an element of the budget, and I think it's important to bear in mind, you know, as we, as we roll the budget up, uh, we're, we're in the squeezing part of the budget process. And even with the squeezing part of the budget process, some items that have been removed from the budget, uh, we have, I think, a couple of decisions in front of us, Mr. Chair. The first is, do we choose to, tr do we choose to change carriers? A, and then B, do we choose to recommend and uh, to the Finance Committee that we choose to keep our current percentage or choose to increase it? That Those are two votes I think that should happen tonight, if yeah. I could. The second piece is we need to get the temper of the Finance Committee as well as members of the community and keep warning them, and I've heard, you've, you've heard me say this before, you know, as we continue to talk about the risk for an override discussion, do we want to talk about a $300,000 override or a quarter of a million dollar override, thousand, quarter of a million dollar override. Either way, the smallest number that's in front of us right now is effectively two hundred thousand dollars. Right, and that's after a week. It was three hundred thousand last last week. We we yeah, we, we you know down. muscled a bunch of stuff around and got a hundred thousand dollars out of it. But now we're getting down to the we're getting down to brass tacks. So I, I would suggest that that may be the path. The, we might want to take tonight. Do we choose to change carriers, and do we choose to take this opportunity with those savings to increase our percentages? Yep. Motion for discussion, change carriers. Second, second. for discussion. All right. But, um, I don't see how you, I don't see how we don't. Um, I I know in the past few years. Um, the cost for uh, the, the Hampshire cock, the trust has been going up, um, partly because they've, they've no longer been able to keep the pricing down, bec and so they've been using our reserves. Right. Basically, reserves has gone down over the last, the last <laughs> few years. Um, so we know, we know that that's not, that was, was help keeping the cost low. That's not, that's not gonna occur. So I, I I, I don't like to do it, um, but with the, the way that the, it's structured right now, that you maintain the plans, maintain the cost, actually cost goes down a little bit, uh, relatively speaking, I don't see how we don't, we don't see <coughs> yeah. If I continue with that discussion, yeah. it, this, this vote is not without a heavy heart. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, would hate, I would hate to see the, uh, I would love to see the Hampshire Trust continue to flourish and in four or five years call them back up and say, hey, are you interested in quoting on our health insurance? Right, where are you now? I, I, would, I would hate, this is an extension of this discussion, I would hate to think that we are being tipped toward essentially a monolith of insurance carriers in that it's a municipality, there aren't options in five or six or seven or 10 years. That's a bad thing. However, that said, this change in just the contribution for our employees out of pocket is pretty significant in the current proposal from the Hampshire Trust. That's, that's and what that's, got me. That's intangible to people who, anybody who's got health insurance knows when you get the new card, you go, ah, damn it, 
what, what just went up on me, <laughs> right? Yeah. What just went up on me? We haven't had the what just went up on me discussion with our staff in, in some time, to the Hampshire Trust credit. So it's a little bit of a double-edged sword here for us to be talking about jumping ship from Hampshire Trust, but this is a pretty big nut. And I was shocked when I looked at line by line as I went through that last week. Your umbrella, your umbrella jumped from three to ten thousand dollars. I mean, that's real money. Right. And I could definitely see people having to deal with those cost increases Correct. for situations. For people who are, you know, making thirteen, fourteen, fifteen dollars an hour. Right. Working effectively for benefits. It's not like we're talking about people making ninety no. or hundred and twenty thousand yeah. or even seventy five thousand. Yeah. Makes Sorry. a big difference. Good. If they've, no. if they've quoted to us that there is a cap of 11-1 mm -hmm. as a, an annual raise, mm. if there's some kind of catastrophic change in the market, and what happens, is there any kind of recourse that we have if they try to say, we have to bring it up by 12-5? So that being Are Maya, right? Yeah. yeah, that's, yeah. A good, that's a really good question. Well, we heard from our, from our, our contact here she's a plant administrator, would be assigned to the town of Sunderland, is that we would use our current SIC code. We would be guaranteed at least the average, yeah. unless something catastrophic happened with our own pool. Yeah. And then the average, they try to keep at a particular level. But it's a great question. I'd like to get an answer from them for, you know. What, what are the drivers? Is, 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 a, is there a potential for a kind of shift that we're seeing proposed from the Hampshire Trust? on the horizon. And I would say in our conversation downstairs with the financial team, uh, the pools were very, very different, both in the form of enrollment as well as in the form of reserves from Hampshire Trust versus Maya. Again, just scale. Um, in, the case of, in the case of the Hampshire Trust, you know, those pool of active reserves, meaning if every single participant had maximum claims starting tomorrow, how far out could they go, right? That that's they try to keep within a, a calendar year. Maya talks about years uh, plural. So, great point, and that helps even out those averages. But that's a great question. You know, it, it's been really interesting learning. With it's been interesting hearing about the kind of backstop that insurance plays. And frankly, I don't ever want to do it again. <laughs> I'm not in that business. All right. So, uh, we ready? Any other discussion topics? On this, With respect or? to the transfer. Yes. Okay. Only the, the only the transfer. Yep. Uh, uh, no more discussion. Okay. Um, all those in favor? All right. Aye. 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 All right. So three to zero on the transfer. <clears throat> okay. So now our next discussion topic is the potential increase. The right. changing of the town's town's percentage of contribution from 55 to 60 percent is something that motion to uh, increase contribution rate from to recommend contribution rate change from 55 to 60 percent. Second for discussion. Yep. Okay. All right. Let's discuss away. <clears throat> and I know just from perspective, we was it six or seven years ago we said that we had dropped it down to that from previously being 60%. Actually, Peter was in the finance committee the first time. Was that? No. It took, it took from the time you were on the finance committee to the time that I went through the finance committee to get into the select board to get 5% added. So we're talking. It's a while, yeah. 20 years. Mm. Yeah. Um, you talked about the need to With respect to the um, frontier percent, yep. that there was the situation where, because of the increase in the co pays that were under the county plan, which are similar under the plan you'll be adopting, there had to be a uh, what a sharing of the premium savings right. with the uh, members. Um, how will that play out here? Be 
because it's the same situation, but I don't know what the agreements are. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a great point, if I could, Mr. Chair. Mm. Uh, our town council has weighed in and said that there is no such clause with respect to public safety, police department, uh, and there is question about that clause with respect to Union 38, because we're talking about town employees, not the entirety of the collective bargaining. So the, the point you're um, raising is a good one. There's a shared, if there's a savings in any of the benefits for the employer, the um, organized body, in this case the FTA, the teachers at Frontier, get a percentage of whatever that savings is. If that's the case here, and I don't believe it is for Union 38, that would be reflected, and it would still reflect the savings. Well. Per can I put for one second? Yeah, please. The, the thing is, they talk about you'd have, there's a potential that 25% of the savings could, could go back to the union. Correct. Absolutely right. Potential. Correct. Right. Savings. Right. So I guess I would say if the union wants, in, in my opinion, yep. if the union wants that 25% instead of allowing their, that 5% increase, I mean, what? I think what, why it was, was put in there was specifically because uh, a, a town or a municipality could mean keep continuing to reduce the coverage or up co-pays and they would make saving. So they, they, they put it in there so that it would, it would kind of throttle on it. Good word, David. It, it would thro throttle that, okay. that attempt to yeah. saving. Yeah. We're trying to help the employees. Right, right. I mean, does the change from 55 to 60 play any role in mitigating that uh, situation or does it just, well that sits, you know, I mean the argument for the other side might be, well that's just something totally separate and we still want our 25% share of the savings it from. Uh, it, it, not only that, Peter, but also <laughs> the fact that there's a, there's the continuation of existing coverage. The argument could be made that the existing, if we, if we, we're, we're, we're talking about moving both elements. Right. That is, we're not enhancing uh, benefits were also buffering against its its um, diminish right and picking up a piece of the right. of the town side so both parts can be argued that is your out-of-pocket expenses we're already talking about saving right off the bat and we're talking about adding potential adding of five percent of copay from here forward so with respect to savings, the municipality, um, it's going to be hard to argue $9,000 across the employee base, but yeah. <laughs> that's okay. We're ready to have that discussion. As a mechanism, though, and it's important to bear that in mind, that is negotiated, and it's something that we have uh, correspondence drafted from our town council to both unions. And as part of the move, we have to create a health care advisory body that includes the town, a municipal employee, select board member, finance committee member, and a representative of each of those unions. And a retiree. And one retiree, sorry, right. Because if retirees, people lose sight of the fact that retirees are affected by this as well. If they haven't moved off to Medicaid, they're in here as well. It's not just active employees. Correct. That's a good point, Tom, good catch. And you raise a good point about, you know, if you want to discuss 25% of 9,000. Sure. Okay. but. Let's look at all the aspects that we're trying to achieve you could, here. You could, have, you could have one one employee have <clears throat> five digit increases just out of pocket. Yeah. Yeah. So city union negotiation requires a BOS member, a FinCon member, a union member. Two, all of the union members represented. So it would be t it would be teachers, it would be police, uh, and a retiree. And that makes perfect sense. Why not look at it collectively? I got nothing to hide. We've been talking about it for a long time. <laughs> True. And it is a sticky point. Anybody who's negotiated a contract recognizes that. Get involved with organized labor or any of a personal contract. Healthcare, healthcare can be an obstacle when they look at those numbers and go, hmm, wow, 55%. Sorry. Especially when you look at the percentage of an average person or family's income that that takes up every year and big where nut. it's going. It's a big nut. 
because there's all the squabbling back and forth about Washington about you know the, the Affordable Care Act and everything, but it's none of it is actually addressing the real elephant in the room. Actually, a, a, a report uh, over the course of the weekend said the third year in a row that the enrollment of, as a function of the ACA is up and the insurance company's participation is up and the insurance company's profits are up. But we don't want to hear that because we listen to BS news. And that's with a, a drastically shortened enrollment window, as I recall, too. Well, we don't bother so. funding it. We just drive it in the ground. Yeah. <laughs> Living the lie. Living the lie. Yeah. Anybody got any other questions on, uh, on that at all? Good question, Peter, about the about the negotiation. So mm -hmm. just to be clear on my part, mm -hmm. that yeah. process, to the extent that it has to take place or does take place, does take place. is not something that the school committee needs to uh, be concerned about, I guess, is the question. Well, I think you need to be concerned about it in the role as a school committee. For and that future negotiation. But it didn't sound like this was something where the list of characters you had there had a school committee at the table. Um, actually, the list of characters for the advisory board, that, that can be expanded at any level. Uh, I think the notice uh, from the town goes to the school committee, the administration, and the union president. So you're actively involved in this decision and how it's implemented. And the nice part about you know committees that are set up by statute, they can always be expanded. Blue that's, commissions. Oh, that's a minimum. Yeah. You got to have these people who are affected by it. Right. Fine. Add more. But obviously you guys are the ones that are leading the show. In, in, this, in this decision about uh, the budget process, that answer is, is yes. It's, it starts with these deliberations, this vote, and then, and then the process starts to unfold. <clears throat> and these guys have to tell us if we can actually afford to save 9,000 bucks this year. <laughs> yep. We don't know yet. <laughs> it doesn't change a heck of a lot. You know, 9,000 here, 1,000 there. It's like, anyway, well, I digress. That's not the big, those aren't the big ones. No, those yeah. are absolutely not the big ones. We've got 248,000 in operating expenses. We have, I mean, anyway, that's the yes. omnibus budget discussion could be coming up. But we do have a vote on the table. Yep. All right. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, three to zero on the percentage. Okay. Three to zero to increase to 60. Yes, to increase to 60%. 60. Yep. That includes the steps to notify the other unions and correct and all right and form the committee as noted by our town council. If I could, Mr. Chair, um, noticeably absent tonight is a town administrator because she is uh, working a homeless kitchen tonight as an emissary of the town. I think that's really important to bear in mind. Oh, I made a note to send her a thank you because I think it's a, it's a very important thing. It's a worthy cause, and we'll be asked reason. we'll be asked why on these votes the town administrator wasn't here. She provided us with a wealth of information, but had scheduled this work working over at the Amherst Food Shelter uh, some weeks ago. Yep, that's true. All right. Omnibus budget discussion. Yeah, I was just going to say I've got these two lovely sheets in front of me. <laughs> so I would suggest that everything that says Hampshire get that we just fold. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a lot. And the Maya 55 we fold. Now the 55 and 60 may still be a discussion, but right. that said. With these these discussions tonight, a week ago we were in the three hundred plus thousand dollar range. That was over three hundred thousand uh, dollars. We currently have a structural gap of two hundred eighteen thousand four four nine, and I think it's important as we go through the entire budget. Our timeline for notifying for questions is important to bear in mind. The warrant is effectively closed right now, closed on Thursday. Let me make sure to get my dates right. Calendar there. Which one is my binder? It closes on the fifteenth. Yeah. Close on the so it closes this Thursday at noon. Anybody wants to get a warrant article on the annual town meeting warrant, they have until noon time on Thursday to get that submitted, formatted, and submitted to the town clerk. 
Clerk or our office? Or our office, or a good point. Our office. office. Yeah, either one. Get to the right schedule. place. Too many capital pieces. Scott, if I, is Finance Committee ready to talk about the uh, budget tonight, or is that next week? They don't have a quorum, but you guys have topical points? Peter wants to talk as well. Yeah. Yeah, I just have a question. There. I was sitting here last week, and you were talking about a $340,000 problem. Three hundred. yep. It was just, yeah. And now you're talking about? 220 220 and that was based on stuff done during the week? Correct. And is there a way to summarize those changes sure. to Actually, give an idea of it's a great point. things you've knocked out? Selectman are going to take a salary next year. That take care of most of it. Yeah, yeah. right. There. <laughs> there's there's six thousand. Yep. <laughs> it's, it's a great it's a great point, Peter. Um, in talking with uh, Sherry or after a finance team meeting this Tuesday, uh, our energy, our PV system, we see an entire year of production. So our energy contribution line we've taken down by about six thousand dollars. We've taken and, and some, that, that, that shouldn't go without saying. I that's mean, a, that's a good point, Tom. Go ahead. I mean, some we skip over those things, right? And and you know we don't mention them, but that's right. that, that's a kind of a big thing. So uh, a couple of years ago, of course, people know that you know we 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 voted to lease some land to try to get our energy production completely local. That is everything that you see on the ground over there is generating what the town uses. The elementary school sees a 30 plus thousand dollar annual reduction that we, we consolidated them into the energy line. People who are familiar with the budget, we did buildings, then we did energy, then we were doing production. Those expenses are removed from areas from this building, library, elementary school, treatment plant to, treatment plant to a lesser extent. And those energy lines now we've seen through a combination of Green communities initiatives in this building, green communities initiatives in the public um, library, green communities initiatives phase two going over at the elementary school, Th that one project alone could yield another $20,000 in reduction of cost. But this year, we took those energy lines and looked at them and said, well, our production rate, our lease rate, we can close that gap by another $5,000. Last year, it generated about $11,000 in free cash we decided to take that out the expense budget. We took some of the work off of the, um, we took some of the requests from departments for salary increases and aligned them with the personnel committee's uh, recommendation. It's not gonna make everybody happy. We got <laughs> superintendents, we got librarians, we got, we got people who have all put in for something that's greater than these percentages we're recommending this percentage as we stand now and hopefully coupling it with this this um, health care decision tonight fuel expense was one over the weekend we also lock, over the week we also locked in our oil heating oil for the year so th those numbers became more firm also what in price the, you, what price you get i want to say 219 for the again that's for a year also, uh, in meeting downstairs on Tuesday, we took the advice of the treasure collector and the, we're taking the advice in this budget reflects treasure collector as well as um, accountant and looked at our receipts over last year and looked at them in a three-year trend and we budget our, our revenues based on three-year trends. We specifically to the state stick to that because who the hell knows? But we looked at our own three-year trend and we closed up and added a little bit more in the way of revenue. And that was where you get this, this difference of about 90,000 bucks. That's not on the revenue side. That's a squeeze of about $60,000 of total expenses. And then about a $30,000 change in the revenues. And, you know, and we're at that point now where, you know, God forbid the state does anything weird. <laughs> not saying they won't. But we know with enough history looking back at actuals versus estimates that we don't want to look dumb. At the same time, it's important to bear in mind we don't want to compromise free cash moving forward. We don't have these here, but there's a use of cash sheets, all of our accounts. You, you guys will have those. 
you know, we start with a blank value in each of the accounts and what do we appropriate out of it? What does the Tetris of our appropriation look like? And we get to the end and we try to put forward, based on the free cash guidelines, between $100,000 and $150,000 just left. So it goes forward, moving forward. We asked the accountant on Tuesday for an analysis of what generated our free cash this, this current year. We should have that in the next two weeks. So we can say, okay, it came from this unappropriated funds or this change in the revenue stream or this one time whatever so that we know that that trend line continues. And I remember distinctly, um, Dana, and I've been talking way too much tonight and for the listening audience and people in this room, I apologize, but you know. I remember distinctly uh, uh, being in the Finance Committee and, and working with uh, our first town administrator, Dana Kennan, and he could watch you in the eye, and he was banging out on the adding machine. He just like bang things out and goes, there's your number. It's, it's a little different now, not that, Dana did a, not that Dana did anything but really good work for us. Now we look at multiple trends over multiple years, and you can squeeze a little here and there. And I think that analysis is a really important thing because you know oftentimes you just kind of look at the, you just what's our number and then what can we do with it and you don't, you don't look at the trends behind that and those are as important if not more important than the number. We jump. We, we our numbers would be like they were, a number of years ago. But regardless, this isn't all sweetness and light. We're still talking about a two hundred plus thousand dollar gap that needs to be that needs to be dealt with. And I can assure you on the expense side, there's not another two hundred thousand dollars to get. So I, I, to put it in perspective, if, if this right here at 218.449, which is the Maya 60% COLA 2% spreadsheet that you see with the revenue stream, that budget deficit still is less than the increase in our education costs. And I'm not picking education out. You could pick other areas out that are 60 or $70,000 at a whack of the global budget. But I think that the, the town's discipline with respect to coming forward with just the real numbers, the real facts, this $218,000 difference is based on an estimated increase of $408,000 of the total budget, if you look at the bottom. Right, so another way to I could argue that you yeah, could please. Look at it. Yeah. Would be that if the overall budget is going up by, I'm looking at the right place here, $516,000. Uh, actually, Peter, it depends on which sheet you've got. The one that I've got here is at 408206. So the sheet you look at on the top highlighted, top right, would be Maya 60 Cola 2. Right. If you go all the way down the bottom, you look at grand total, it should be 408206. So why on the summary sheet on the front yeah. is the bottom line for FY18 different than the bottom line on the on the bigger pages attached? I'm not sure what I'm looking at, Peter. You look at on the on the front smaller page, normal size page, summary sheet on the front. Yeah. Okay. Shows your starting point, meaning the end of fiscal year 18. Yeah. Of 77,541. And if I look at the legal size paper for that same period, it shows 7,649. Peter, they were going to have to. You're right, it does. Good point. So we'll have to drill down on that and double check to make sure that we're absolutely right. Good point. Now, in either case, so I look at FY19 at 8057. Is that what you're seeing? That's correct. Yeah. But in either the case, using the one that gives you the smaller difference, yep. the increase of 408,000. Yep. Okay. Then I could, you know, I could cast it slightly different. Sure. And say, you often talked about school, town, and then the regional schools as being one third, one third, one third. Yep. And if you're saying 200 and 50,000 is coming from the schools, that means that uh, something a little bit over 150,000 is coming from the town. Yep, absolutely right. Mm -hmm. And that's greater than? Two and a half. Completely agree. Greater than, you know, it, it's not like the town, you know, the town is getting nothing here because agreed. that's not a trivial number. 
I couldn't agree more. And those, those two. But if you phrase it the way you did, the total increase and then the amount the school takes, yep. that's assuming that all the, number one, that all the free cash is going to help pay for the town's budget. Yep. Right. Yep. Okay. And then I could also argue here that one of the things that's showing up here is an extra 50000 in state aid that's specifically for education. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And again, this is. I completely agree. I love the I love is here and now you want to present something. Yep. Right. I love the perspective, actually. And that you're, you're absolutely right. You could take, I could take the page that is second to third to last, middle page, and say police. 27 fire 37 total protection of 65 right I completely agree with what you're saying Peter your perspective is spot on how it's how it is couched is really important right same set of numbers but different right. approaches not to create and I've used this term in the past in this room and I think it's important and I appreciate the reminder you know in this room there's no villains and there's no persecutors and there's no victims it's just numbers. And you're right. Couches. And we're just, and we're just sitting here as members of the same town. Yep. Mm -hmm. Great point. Well, we're saying so. That's what you assume. That's what you assume. Yep. Yes. Great point. <laughs> Except for us that live up in North Sunderland. <laughs> you can kind of call us South, South Montague. So. How come the grass is greener in North Sunderland? I want to know that. Yeah. But Peter, I, re I we really get a lot more services. Yeah, a lot more services in North Sunderland. I really, do, I really do value that perspective Especially because you're right. You corner. shouldn't be pitching any one element. Right. Good point. So yeah, that 408, 206, and we're going to drill down through those numbers. Make sure our columns are right. Make sure our starting points are right. That's a, a huge value. But it is, it is nice to get us closer to a quarter of a million versus yes. more than that. Yeah. Right. Now that said, we we have we have to notify the town clerk at some point of our of a ballot question. Do we choose to make these in the form of reductions? The finance team, again, that's treasurer collector, member of the board, accountant, assessor, and town administrator are are, are comfortable with the revenues and not being too conservative. Interestingly enough. Um, and Peter, you could appreciate this from your, your, your time, time in service on the finance side. Uh, two years ago, the statute was changed that the assessors, oh, three years ago, the assessors overlay, if there's the third year with no assessment, that rolls into the uh, rolls, it's accounted for and pushed forward in the form of free cash. We don't have to ask for it anymore. So this notion of accumulating assessors overlay, I know this is kind of deep in the weeds for some people, but the accumulation of assessors overlay over years sometimes could really get kind of big. It doesn't happen anymore. They're really clear about it. It was like, now you've got three years with no, no abatements on that property. Year three drops off and goes in this current forecast. So we asked that question, the accountant went, nope, not anymore. What's happened with the ambulance reserve? Uh, it goes away actually this year. That one thousand one hundred eighty dollars is the last one that you see. That's the end of it. That's, that's the end it. of it. So if I I could please this this year in the South County EMS, they're offsetting to their the South County EMS budget by two hundred and four thousand dollars. They're taking it out of what they call retained earnings. Yeah. Just retained, so yeah. if it wasn't for that use of two hundred and four thousand dollars then our bill for South County would have been up like 204,000. Deerfield pays 150, basically 50%, so that's 100. Thirty-six. We're like then 75, and Whiteley is like 25 right. of that. So we'd have probably been up another $75,000. Right. Yeah, we have an increase and this now year. That, and, and so we're still, we're still, fortunately for us, be, because we had the ambulance reserve, Yep. And we had a number of uh, state and federal grants that we have received. We've been able to um, roll the cost of the EMS much more gradually. But we're still not at, we're not paying 100 percent of the cost yet. Not yet. Yeah, thirty six thousand four five five after the use of some reserves. Correct. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Would have been a bit higher. Yeah. It, would been, it would have been seventy-five, about seventy-five thousand dollars higher. Yep. Interesting. About. 
a little less. I think it would have been like twenty ninety-eight thousand dollars. We could look into that worksheet there. Occasionally we get those this time of year with all the budget numbers right, changing right. and everything. So. so you want to have a discussion next week about the override, Mr. Uh, Chair? I think that'd be a good idea. Yeah. What do you think, uh, Scott? I think we have to have we have to come up with a final number for a ballot question. For yeah. starters. Yep. A, a go no go decision about a ballot question. Right. Yep. Just in general. Right. And, and, then, and, then, and, then, and then that scale. That gives us a chance to make sure our FY18 going forward is correct, as Peter pointed out. And that our requests, they look like they're lined up right now. Um, and our use of revenues are correct. So is that right that it's by Thursday that the question needs to be decided? No, actually, that's the warrant article. Yes, that's, that's, that's the warrant. That's a, yeah. a different animal. But we need to notify. We need to notify the clerk okay. after our next meeting. Right. Because I mean, we could ignore it and keep sweeping it under the rug, but sooner or later, that lump under the rug is going to get pretty huge. No, it's, again, yeah. it's important. I sound like a broken record year on year, but you know, we 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 work in a cash accounting function here in Massachusetts. If we don't have two hundred eighteen thousand four hundred forty nine dollars based on this estimate, we don't have a budget. It's that easy. It's not like the federal. It's level. just that easy. It. Yep. <laughs> well, you just have to look to our one of our surrounding towns that tried to borrow three, four hundred thousand dollars to pay for the budget that they hadn't paid for in a number of years. Guess what happened? And yeah. the local services said, well, "You ain't going to do that." Right. So they just took all their reserves. Took it all. Paid for. Them. The difference. The difference in the two numbers. Yeah. So the capital override expended. Oh. So it's not reflected because we have. That's a good good point. Um, so two weeks ago, and Peter, to, to we vote a capital budget for people who are uh, dialed in as well as people who go to town meeting. Remember, we vote an operating budget, which this one is, and we also vote the capital budget. The capital budget ends up being reflected as part of an accounting function, and I think that's where the revenues you're seeing come in right here. That one oh seven six eight nine. And, and that's, that ends up, we have to account for those as a revenue stream. We don't have it here as the, as the um, operating budget, but you will have it balanced out at town meeting. Whatever is expended from capital to capital, those numbers will line up. We got yelled at by the accountant last year about that, mm. saying we did not have, we didn't reflect it as a revenue stream. But you got the same, you got that in both columns, 18 and 19. Yeah, it's going to go up in, in 19, right? And we haven't appropriated from it yet. So I think you're going to see that. You're absolutely right, Peter. That's something that hopefully after this town meeting, we can have in a format that keeps us, removes some of the noise. Again, it's, it's, it's not unlike voting for the treatment plan. Right now, the treatment plan budget's reflected in the omnibus budget, but the capital budget's not reflected in the omnibus budget. So we got to clean that up. We got to find a cleaner mechanism for that. Maybe it's a maybe it's a simple category down here, and that we can talk about that with the capital, uh, with respect to selectmen's updates, because that capital team is meeting on the twenty seventh to talk about this year's budget. We got that coming up in our topic list. Twenty so. seventh. But again, yeah. great point, Peter. It shows up on one column, it's got to show up on the other. Anybody have any other um, discussions on this? I'm sure our television ratings have plummeted tonight compared to other <laughs> weeks. <laughs> this is not the kind of stuff that, uh, as important as it is, people, I, you know, I it's, completely get it. Yeah, but we got to do it. Deep in the weeds, you know? Mr. Moderator, what do you think? <clears throat> Bob, I can remember when the town's budget was less than a million. <laughs> yeah. That was just from North Main Street. And, and we had a million dollars in free cash. <laughs> that, was, that was one year, actually. <laughs> it's, I know it's a small item, yep. but it's a big percentage. Sure. Mm -hmm. From one of the elections. Elections yeah. once jumped yeah. to five. We have two elections this year instead of one. Wow. Yep. That's, That's a very erratic. Every, every other year, every third year, you'll see that. Right. Yep. 
It's a great point. We've actually had the conversation with the town clerk and the accountant. Is there a way to have an elections line? You can't carry those forward. Yeah, so it's, it's cyclical. You get a couple of elections, it jumps way up, and you get, the next year it jumps way down. That's it's the, uh, the direct cost of uh, putting on an election. Which in a way is good because you get I to see it reflected. Like completely agree. Yeah, I, you know I think that's a nice. It makes it a little harder. And, you know, can't say out the noise like we try to, but that's a good yep. indicator of what it actually costs. We need to make sure there's no dimpled chads or hanging right. chads or right. any of that other stuff because that costs money. Based on social media and influence, it won't matter anymore. That's true. Yep. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. I'm supposed to say yet. 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 Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm not even going to touch that one. Okay. Yep. <laughs> All right. So I think. No, go ahead. Two options we have are to fund this budget, mm -hmm. the $218,000 deficit, yeah. mm -hmm. or make cuts to it to balance it. So we'd have to cut two hundred and ninety-eight thousand or two hundred and eighteen thousand dollars out of the budget, mm -hmm. right? Or some fraction thereof. Yep. Or we have to go for an override. You kind of yeah, fund three options. Yep. You fund it from reserves. You can reduce it to match your revenue estimates, right. or you can you can raise and appropriate to a ballot question. So funding from reserves is out because we're already at rock bottom in terms of reserves. Well, actually, our reserves are pretty solid. They're about 7% of our total operating budget. The trouble with funding from reserves is that expectation is the budget doesn't grow in the coming year, and you don't need more growth in revenues that are recurring. Right. right? So if we have a recurring expense, it's important to have a recurring revenue stream. I, I noted that it was ironic that we have seen the, the shortcomings and the problems that that's caused with Hampshire insurance. Bingo. They're starting to pull. They, they, they're right. see the results. Yeah, that's that. a, it's a good analogy, actually. Yep. So they, they, they can't fund their, they can't fund, in that case there, it's a lot of, it's a, it's a fiduciary, I'm sorry, it's a, uh, what do they call this, actuarial liability. But yeah, same kind of animal. If we, if we choose to fund any given year out of reserves, the coming year, the expectation is the budget growth is zero and you try to replenish your reserves. It's it's right. it's very difficult. That's a higher hurdle than going to the ballot box. Yeah. In terms of override. Yeah. The last time we had an override was when? Last year. Capital stabilization. Nope. Last uh, year. Last year we had. Last oh, year. That's right. We asked. Yeah, right. We asked. We asked for three hundred thousand dollars, and I'm, my yeah. voice is going to go up again. We asked for three hundred thousand dollars last year of levy capacity, knowing that we had the structural, structural deficit. deficit. Now we're going back to the town to say, uh, some measure, that structure didn't change. The magnitude may have changed. We may have managed the magnitude a little bit, but it didn't change. There's still a structure there. So if you go for an yeah. override. I was just going to say, and I, you mentioned it, but I don't think, I think you should make sure you don't lose sight of it, and that is that your statement that the, that the basic scope of the structural deficit hasn't changed right. um, doesn't really take into account the couple areas where you've managed or are in the process of managing significant efficiencies in the operation of town government. And mm -hmm. one with the solar and electric yep. operation, and now the second one with the uh, change in the, in the health insurance. Yep. And so, you know, that's, I mean, that's what you ought to be doing. You know, hopefully, you know, we're using our brains to, to run the town Great as point. efficiently as possible. And it's only because of that that the structural problem isn't another 50, 70, I don't know what the number would be, 50, right. 75, $100,000 yep. higher. Great point, Peter. And I'm not sure where you're going to pull the next big rabbits out of that. <laughs> but, well, it's a small hat with you know, a big you rabbit. Say, well, You've survived by putting it off a year and seeing nothing bad happen, but you've had a couple right. of big cost savings that while you will continue to enjoy those savings in future years, 
you don't get any additional savings, which is what's required to right. solve the structural it's a, problem. It's a really and good especially point. Especially like Peter. the solar. I mean, you know, and, and there's, if, what you're starting to see now, if you're looking at crude futures and everything, they're creeping back up slowly. Up. And, yeah. you know, we would have even more of an impact if we didn't have those solar savings. And one of the other things that we're looking at now is um, the LED converting our lighting, street lights. LED lighting. Yeah, and that's going to bring a. That's in, that's in this year's budget implementation. That's another eleven thousand dollars of reduction. But yeah. to to your point, Peter, the, and Tom mentioned earlier, and I, I like I like the perspective that is singing some of the praises of the steps that have been done to keep the gap as narrow as it is. We we had a couple of annual town meetings where green communities was a bit of a hot topic. I remember, yeah. And we, we, don't, we don't really take into account anymore, since it's kind of in the rearview mirror, is the level of grants that we've gotten and executed to weatherize and tighten these buildings that we have to, I think it was $38,000 at the public safety complex for Re removal and replacement of a chiller that was oversized by a factor of three. That, that building still annoys me to no end, but that's a whole other discussion. Uh, but, you know, we've, we've taken a fair amount of, the town has taken a fair amount of steps to move that forward. This year with the, you don't see it in this room, a little bit in this room, uh, the IT grant that came from Community Compacts that Phones. Sherry applied for, it was $23,000 of phone bill we don't have anymore. That was hardware that was put in. That was forty plus thousand dollars worth of capital work. Town didn't pay a penny for. Now, green communities paid for that, and it could be argued that yeah, we scale up. I totally get it. But it wasn't forty thousand dollars. The board went to the annual town meeting and said, "We need forty thousand dollars to do this to save ten thousand dollars." That just came through a grant application and administration. And to, again, to Sherry, it's a shame she's not here. Um, that just deserves credit for. But you're right. It's going to be a nice list of things. And now that you got me thinking about it, I'm going to have talking points. Well, and, and as you said that, too, it makes me think of things that we've discussed with yeah. the school about trumpeting their things, like where their kids get accepted to. And I'm thinking we should probably take some of our own advice and, well, again, you know, to trump those things. Exactly right. I mean, otherwise, otherwise, you just sort of feel like you look at it without knowing this stuff that, right. well, gee, they said they had a structural problem last right. year right. and nothing's changed. And right. we didn't vote for the override and nothing's changed, so why should we vote for the override this time? Right, because you don't but get that. But in fact, you're saying point. we made it through this one by having a bunch of innovative stuff that yep. has saved the town a bunch of money, but yep. we're going to be hard pressed to repeat that yep. because there are only so many places you can keep saving money. Some stuff just keeps getting more expensive. Great point. You almost want to do a, another budget that says, here's what it would look like if you didn't have those cost savings in there. Sure, that number would be 100,000, you know, yeah. 100,000 high. Sure. Right. Great point. Right. I'm just going to say, you almost mask the structural problem. You do. Right. You do. Right. Because it gets washed over. Yeah, like the, no, the amount we saved moving over to VoIP, you yep. know. Exactly. Yes, but that's what we've done for 20 years plus. Right. No, that's not, you know, it's just and, and, and that has changed, but it, people aren't aware that how good. much effort goes into that. Good point. Well, yeah, a lot of part time, a lot of part time people do that. I mean, you look at the energy concept, the energy committee, they're, I mean, right. you, ask, you ask members of the town who's on the energy committee, they probably don't know. But, you know, one of the things Sunland's done since we've become a green community, we've saved. You know, at that at that time, the goal to become a green community is you had to save twenty percent of right. your of your energy Over. within ten years or something like that, yeah. right? We we're already at twenty four percent, and and we really I mean we're like two thirds of the way through that that process. We we're, we're already at twenty four percent, and then we put and that doesn't even count the solar. And if it wasn't for my my. Our, all of our nemesis sometimes we would have we would be producing almost 200 kW more, more right if if it had gone through yeah um, well, but that's, a, that's a sort of that's important that's we, an important we do we do things but you, we don't have time at town meeting to explain that and how how do you get that out i mean we have to, we have we have a hard time getting people to know that we're putting in a 2.2 million dollar project <laughs> on north main street yeah. and, and, and 200,000 bucks 
Right. Yeah. For two hundred thousand dollars of town expenditure. How many millions? <laughs> on two point two million. Yeah. It, it, it's it's hard. It, I, I mean, yeah. so Sorry, you, you, I mean, but that's what we you know. It, and I would say if you went back and and looked at the budget, it, if you saw the way that you know, go back and look at you know how we're using Comcast money from Comcast to help support some of our t other technologies, mm -hmm. um, our savings uh, on our green communities the. The, the things that you know our, our technology line item which which is woefully underfunded i mean yeah that that could stand us into danger and well and you say how do you do Good that point. Say, it's easy for me because we see what happens if if uh if we get hacked we've been hacked right well, we know we, we know the hacked. Things are I, I can tell you right now i pay close attention because i work in it and i pay close attention to the emails that we are be getting and i've noticed a marked increase the, of emails that even get through the quarantine system. Dart, dot are you? Uh, no. <laughs> but Just there's saying. a lot, of, you know, there's a lot of, a lot more scam emails going on out there. And, and security is a constant battle. And even for companies that have tons of money to spend on IT, and we don't. I mean, we're, we're lucky we can keep what we have going. And, and so, so I, I guess I would say, Peter, thank you. I think you're giving us a compliment. Yeah. I would I, I would say I would I would say thank you, but we have good we have good people that work for us. They they they, they really are working, and I and and unless you, see, the closer the closer you are, you you see what what people do, and we have you know our 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 financial staff, our town administrator, our you know, our, I would say even our department heads, they're they're always looking to to try to to save money. And we haven't even talked about the fire department with their with their uh, a request for a, a, a fire truck, right? You know, and and they they had last they wanted it they they wanted they 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 had the need for it for a few years now. Bobby Bobby Hearn told us about it many years ago that there was a need. Right. I look forward to coming. He was trying to put money away. And we never were able to put money away. But last year they went out for the bidding process, and only got one response. He said, "Well, it's awful hard." We all, it's awful hard to put forward on one response. Yeah. So they went through. They went through the entire process yeah. again. Went through the, the specification, and they got two bids this year. Right. Yeah. Which um, is better. And, and that wasn't easy. That wasn't an easy process for them. But I, I think all our departments are. Try, they try to save money. Well, and, and 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 I I, I think, um, hope, you know part part. You look at part of the budget this year. Franklin Tech. The the budget's going up. Because we have more students, and you pay you pay for what you use. That can go up one year; they can go down another year. We have really no control. It was actually a really good, uh, if I could, Mr. Chair, mm. uh, correspondence from the administration from the tech school saying our operating budget's 2.2. Sad, you know, sadly for Sunderland, you have an enrollment increase, and yeah. this is the cost of attendance. And we've seen that go both ways. And we've seen it go both ways. Yeah. And again, they're they're very candid about it because they. They, they, you know, understand enrollment of the community. That's what it is. Thankfully, we're not out of district. Yeah. And I think that, like, all of what we've been talking about reflects people's pride in their work. And also, you know, it, it's easy to this go point. and bash government and stuff. But I think it also reflects a certain measure of civic pride. Regardless of what's going on in Washington, we believe in what we're doing. And we all take, you know, a lot of pride and put a lot of effort into trying to make this town a better place. If I could, Mr. Chair, Peter, you give me, I, I wrote a note, you know, develop a list for town meeting of benefits from efficiencies. What were they, what were the savings? Yep. They're baked in. We don't see them anymore, though. They kind of get lost in the noise. It's a great point. Yeah, huh? but you know, you know the problem with that, Scott, is yeah. it's going to take time to put this all together. I know. Somebody has to take the time <laughs> know, to put it I together. Know, yep. It's all the same. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> There's no getting around that. Even if it's yeah. a handful of talking all points, right. I all get right. it. All right. We got to move. Yeah, we do. All right, so we've covered that. Um, any other general omnibus budget discussions for tonight, anyway? <laughs> okay, because I know we've got some general back, and I know you guys haven't been here to just listen to all this fun stuff tonight. Oh, it is so yeah, I know. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> How many times did you have to like elbow each other to wake so, up? As right? long as you're not here looking for money, you're fine. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It's the wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, I just want to ask you about the timing of this because you have to make this decision not this week, correct, but next week? Yeah. 
we could we have a school committee meeting tomorrow night and including a budget hearing which of course you're welcome to come to and um, I have no idea whether we will uh, you know budget is still yep. under discussion right. um, but I would be real surprised if there wasn't a general feeling in favor of an override that would enable budgets at the level that you're talking about now, um, as opposed to um, uh, knocking them back to the revenue, to the estimated revenues. Right. And, and I think there's also an understanding on the committee that the uh, increased use of reserves is not, is not at all sustainable. And so that way right. is also not a preferred way. I, but we would not, you know, it would be nice to sort of mm -hmm. have some idea in terms of, you know, where where you think you're heading. Would help yeah. our discussions, I think. Yeah. Tom, you want to talk about the risk of an override contingent and when it fails? Ah, uh, we I know what happened. Yeah, I know. Right. Well, and I, I think it's important to keep in mind, like we've talked about, like we put the override last year, but let's talk about how many times we've actually passed one in, since it's been in effect. We did the capital stabilization override. And, the, and it's important to step back and look at, we're not coming here every year asking for an override. It's only on occasion. And I think you periodically have to expect a little adjustment and not, because this is one of my pet peeves, is people have, Two, Prop two and a half has somehow morphed into something that puts some controls on things to people thinking now that nothing can ever go up past two and a half percent. And it's not like we want it to all, but occasionally you do have to make a periodic adjustment and, and adjust things. And when you step back and look at the bigger picture of in terms of the debt that we have coming off of our roles and everything, mm -hmm. in the end, we talk about like stabilizing the rate so we can actually achieve this and still keep a stable, if not maybe even a little lower rate in the end. I think it's important to look at that and step back and look at the big picture and not just look at these little slices of, oh, well, right now if we do this, this is the case, because that's not how you have to look at the budget. You can't just look at it in the tunnel each year. You have to look at the patterns and, and like the analysis we're getting on our free cash. All those things are important. So, but I'm gonna stop talking about that. Sure. Now. Peter, if there is a, if I could, hmm? if, if there is something to bring to the discussion tomorrow night, I'll actually be at a 120 North Main Street meeting in this building tomorrow night. But if there is something to bring to the elementary school committee meeting, if, if this current proposal moves forward to a ballot question, and we're in the 218, $220,000 range, 218 to balance it out. If, if the ballot question fails, we, we know where the cuts come from. They don't come from the regional agreements. Come from the elementary school in the town. Come from right. the elementary school and from the town. So, so if it's down. 200, and again, I'll use 220, since that's, say, say 200. Right. Of 200, $99,000 of increase to the elementary schools asking for will, will be on the hook. That, that, just, we've been there. We, we did it. It was yep. a tear-filled room. And, and now we've got some years and some data to show the right. results. Right. The results of that. Right. You can do it, but you better be prepared to, right. to deal with the results. Yeah. So, so like we said, um, unemployment insurance will go up if you're laying people off. Right. And you think, oh, well, we've just cut money. But and it's yeah. not, that's, not to be, that's not to be doom and gloom. That's just the way it is. Right. So we're gonna, we need to go set. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Go for Thanks. It. Appreciate it. So, Thank you so much for your time. Thanks so much. Sort of realizing that you're perhaps in no hurry to make a decision on this, um, it, it, my reading of the tea leaves is that your inclination is to, is to, your inclination is not to just say, okay, let's cut the budget down to, you know, whatever's required right now. And that the, um, whatever. You can say what you wish, and I mean, I know about Sure. I'm informed enough to talk to the committee. Right. Okay. Yeah, we'll continue to squeeze expenses, just like we right. have for years and past. Right. But, you know, as we look at it right now, based on our revenues, there's a, a gap that's got to be dealt with. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Thank you.
Um, should we just do our minutes real quick and then? Uh, we have minutes? I got, I got a whole ream of March paper 12. here. I don't see. Yeah, there they are. Motion. Yeah. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank All you. right. Um, I'm guessing we got some folks here for the public comment section. Come on down. What's up? Or you can stay back there if, you, if it's easier. Too late. Yeah. Okay. Ah, it's <laughs> Probably good to get up and move around a little bit. Exactly. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ah. Uh. That's all. Yeah. That's all? <laughs> just, just two? <laughs> oh, we need it. Remember, every Marine needs two CBs. <laughs> right? You got it. That's right. All right. Yes, sir. I, I sang as the caissons go rolling along. <laughs> I got a, I got I, yeah. I'm going to share stories. So you, and, you and my dad can get together. <laughs> so what can we do for you? Well, um, I don't know how much uh, Sherry Patch has mentioned or anything, mm -hmm. but we rep uh, represent the uh, North Sutherland Cemetery. Mm -hmm. uh, we're called the Committee of Three. We're elected by the voting members of the cemetery. Um, I'm Ken Kushai. Wayne Fisher. Hey, Wayne. Hey. Hey. And we make up the uh, decisions uh, during the year involving the uh, uh, North Sound Cemetery. Yeah. Yeah. And our budget was, um, well, one of the things is uh, we're coming for is uh, veterans' uh, graves care. Oh, yeah. Okay. At the town way back, and I've got some information. I wrote, made, looked it up. The information uh, that the town had cut when the original two and a half many many moons ago was introduced and failed in the town of Sunderland, and also the budget was uh, what the town would actually donate for veterans' care, grave yep. care, was wiped out. Um, and I'll give you uh, some information. Uh, to you. this came out of the annual report. For 1985, um, a financial budget for 86 and 87. Um, line number 126, North Sunland Cemetery. Appropriation was $650. Requested $650. And the Finance Committee recommended $650. Then in 1988 annual report, for the years for 89 and 1990. Uh, appropriation, and I don't know where this number came from, I have no clue why I got there and how it got that much was, I, I don't know. It was $2,547. Nice. Um, requested uh, was uh, actually 800. And the Finance Committee recommended 700. And as of nothing in, 19, in uh, the annual report for 1990, report except Riverside Cemetery. And uh, what we're doing is asking the town if they would reinstate, uh, Sherry Patch and I talked about it, at least uh, $500 for the care of the uh, veterans' graves up in North Sunland Cemetery. Um, these gentlemen here, this gentleman comes from Leiden. That gentleman there comes from Berniston, mm -hmm. and his crew, um, Oak Ridge Detachment, Marine Corps League. Uh, up in Berniston, is the one that's doing the flags, has been doing for a good number of years. Yeah. And the cemetery committee really appreciates Tim and his crew from doing that and supplying the flags in the city of the town. Well, okay. Dad Rose always did it, so. Okay. Years past, it was done by uh, all volunteers. The care of the property and stuff was all done by volunteers and stuff like that. But people's throughout throughout the years, it's just they move away. by yeah. the wayside and just too busy. And yep. and that's what we're just asking for is uh, some of the money to be reinstated if it's possible to for the care of uh, some of the, the veterans' graves up there. Is we're just barely hanging on, yep. Yep. Okay. and any little bit will help. And uh, we have a good crew that maintains the cemetery and very good crew. Uh, as Tom, he goes by it almost every day. He get a test. And uh, um, that's, that's the sip of all the wax. Okay. Brilliant. Easy. Anybody have any questions or? $500 do it for a year? Barely? Well, we just, 
right. thought yeah. we'd throw it a number out. And, yep. sure. and just so folks know, like how many of the stones up? Do you know how many of, of the existing stones are like veterans? Any oh, Thirty-two. Yeah. Thirty-two. How many in total are you getting there? That I don't know. Oh, no, uh, no, no, as far as, uh, you mean veterans or grave sites? Oh, like you got 32 veterans, and then like what's the total grave site count? Well, it goes all the way back to 18-something, so it, yeah. uh, it was still maybe one or two a year at the most. Uh, like added. Added uh, grave sites. All right. Do we have that as, I think, part of our warrant article, dis warrant article discussion? And we haven't, we, so the warrant closes on Thursday. Right. We, we know there's a draft article about North, North um, uh, Sunderland Cemetery. Ah. And so it's, it's currently in draft form. The warrant hasn't closed, so we haven't taken any action on it. But again, it is part of a draft warrant right now. Yep. And so our next meeting will be motions to include or not include. And that's the next step in this process. Mm -hmm. but again, for $500 um, at the annual town meeting warrant, uh, that's a vote of town meeting, not a budget line item. Right. Yep. And that's important to bear in mind. And if there's a way in the future years to codify that for Veterans Affairs, I know as the Riverside Cemetery is, is all volunteer as well, and we work with the veterans agent for our, our flags and our markers. So maybe there's a way for us to pool our resources in the future, yeah. and you know you can come down and see us down south. Hey. Amen. Amen. There you Amen. Go. Thanks so much for bringing well, my it. Dad's buried down there. Well, you there's you come down every every couple yeah. weeks then. There you go. Yeah. Brilliant. So was it my mom? And, um, in fact, my my sister Sally is buried down there too. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know she is. Okay. My mom and dad are buried in North Dakota. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks know, for under, under eight feet of snow. Is, yeah. 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 This has nothing to do with anything here tonight. Mm. But would any one of you select them go down to the nursing home this week? No? no? Okay. I did not, no. All right, I was just wanted somebody was down there looking because they, for your 250th? 300. 300. 300, 300 uh, yeah. thing, yeah. and you wanted, they wanted us to uh, use the activity stand for shuttle and Oh, you. nice. So, see me. All right. Okay. Well, thank you so much. All, right. All the way right. from Leiden. Well, thank, thank you very you. much, gentlemen. Yep. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. Have a good night. 20 years. You too. <laughs> okay. Hey, buddy. How you doing, Fantastic. All right, so. And you kept that gorgeous thing right in the corner? Yeah. <laughs> she run, she, we're just, she's the puppeteer. She, uh, <laughs> we just she do what she says. You got it so we won't have any town administrator updates. Do we have any uh, board updates for tonight? Only uh, two uh, uh, meetings coming up. The first is 120 North Main tomorrow night here at 6 o'clock. And then uh, what's, Capital. What's tomorrow night, 120? 120 North Main. Yep. yep. Mm. And that's here. And Peter said there's a uh, budget <laughs> hearing tomorrow, elementary I'll, school. I'll, I'll tell you, the, 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 we had a South County Senior Center meeting the other night. Mm. And Deerfield, the residents, the uh, older residents in Deerfield are very impressed with the town of Sunderland. We may see a migration across the bridge. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they're, they're, they're putting up 70 affordable units right at the base of Mount Sugarloaf. Can right. seniors move in there? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, I'm sorry. Those are condos. I forget. That's a real estate deal as opposed to managed senior housing. I, I think that's there. It's a very they big are, difference. Um, and, and again, I, you know, for what, for what it's worth, I mean, when we get the project underway, there'll, right. there'll be a lot of There'll be a, many, many people that will that'll benefit from that. Good. And then uh, capital planning is the 27th again downstairs at six. I don't have any updates. Do you have any, Tom? Anything else? Okay. All right. Uh, and then discuss our 2018 ballot questions. That's our last item. I think we started that last night. Yeah. I'm sorry. Excuse me. We started that uh, earlier this today and mm -hmm. I would suggest that we wait until Sherry's here next week to go down the remaining ballot questions. Yeah. I think Cover really uh, from a budget perspective, scope and scale. Yep. So I would like to make one comment to this, mm. if I could, Mr. Chair. Yeah. This, this weekend was the, uh, this past weekend was the 29th uh, annual um, basketball tournament that put on by the That's Sunday right. Youth. Nice. I think I'd be re remiss and not um, 
talking about the um, um, volunteerism that goes into that tournament. Um, and and it's, a it, it's a lot of work by a lot of people. Um, and, and if you really want us to see community, you'd have to go. And, and, and when I say community, it's, it's, it's our four towns, our four towns together. Um, so we, I mean, that, that it, to, to walk the, the parents, parents, you can't say this enough, parents devote a lot of time to that. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, you, I, I can go in and out during the, the, the course of the week, and I, you can see parents in Deerfield, because their games are held in Deerfield, Whiteley and in Sunderland, and there's some parents that are there from 10 in the morning Saturday to, to 9 o'clock at night on, on Wednesday. But that... But, I've been one of those parents, yep. Yeah. But, but, <laughs> but I guess but more importantly is that I, I'd like to, you know, we decry sometimes about the lack of volunteerism but there is, there, there's a lot of people that, that and, and I guess that's what we always say, is if, you know, if, even if you can give one hour or two hours, um, it does, does make a difference exactly. in Good your point. community. Mm -hmm. and, and that's where you really, and that's where you really see, um, I think, the most, that you can do the most good is in, in your community, helping your neighbors, helping the families of people that you know. And, um, and if it wasn't for the, the youth baseball, it, it, that'd be another expense that the town maintaining of the fields and the uniform that we that we would be seeing. So I just I want to thank um, all those that participated, the young the young men, the young men, the women that participated. Um, they're pretty. It's pretty impressive to see see all those kids um, enjoying themselves for the most part. Kind of like our own version of March Madness right here in Sunderland. Right? Uh, well, you know, and everything else. Without the money. Without the without money. The, yeah, exactly. If I could, Mr. Chair, Tom, and, and I think one of the, what I'm hearing is um, not necessarily a sports-minded guy or sports-minded kids who are now grown up, but when you, say, when you use the term 29th annual. It says a lot. That says a lot. Mm -hmm. And, and, but in, in, in 20, and I made the comment to someone today. It's funny because, um, as an old older guy, um, it, it's funny because you you see you're seeing kids as adults with their adults kids. with their kids. And I, I was, you know, it. it's funny. Guys, there's one 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 uh, young man that I saw, and and I say, boy, that was. If you could go back 20 years, right. that or 15 years, whatever it was, that was his father. Same yeah, dribble, that... same shot. They shoot the same. They run the same. <laughs> they kind of look the same. I go, oh my God, I get too old for this. How many? Have you, how many have you been to now, Tom? 25. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was gonna say. <laughs> but it, but I it, it is. But again, I I I would, I would like to thank them. Um, cause they do bring they do for that weekend they bring the community together and that's that's a good thing. That's great that's stuff. Good, thing. good point, Tom. All right. I think that about wraps up motion for tonight. We have a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. I'll second for discussion. Okay. We don't want to take so long. No. <laughs> this is this is a quote from Marcus Aurelius. Do not expect bad people to exempt you from their bad ways. Our, our food for thought. Just saying. The last great leader of Rome. Anyway. And now you know the rest of the story. I'd say. I didn't write him. Actually, <laughs> yeah. I did write it, but I didn't copy it. Uh, I. Aye. 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 All right. Call us at 826. Yes.